The affirmative would have, would have you believe that the fossil fuels are on their way out and we're trying to get solar panels back in or in to save our environment. So first point, Bryn mentioned 82% of the world's energy is from fossil fuels. So my question is, how are we going to change that 82% and replace it right away with solar panels? Now, bringing in solar panels just brings in new problems too. We've already been using fossil fuels for a certain amount of time, and that certain amount of time we keep putting in new safeguards, new regulations in order to make it safer for everyone. Solar panels, we're just dabbling into that, and we're creating more and more of those safeguards, but they're just not up to the point that fossil fuels are. Continued use of fossil fuels is bad for the environment. Same thing as Tyler mentioned earlier, the process of creating solar panels, installing them, disposing of them, creates a whole new, uh, a whole array of new issues that also are bad towards the environment. And with that, so photovoltaic cells manufacturing process includes a number of hazardous chemicals, including but not limited to sodium hydroxide and hydrofluoric acid. Now some of these compounds, These compounds aren't able to be disposed of in a proper manner. They're just, the companies are led to possibly dispose of them in improper ways, such as possibly running down rivers, improper disposal into forests, things like that. An example of that would be in China, the Jenko solar plant has faced protests and legal action since one of its plants was accused of dumping toxic waste into a nearby river. So the companies are forced feel like they're forced to do these things because the ways of disposing the chemicals that they're producing is too expensive and not efficient for them to make money. So along with that goes grid infrastructure. America was built on utilizing fossil fuels in order to run our country. We'd have to rebuild our entire infrastructure and the opposition would tell you that it's going to bring more jobs, but also with more jobs can be more problems. And as the infrastructure is set, those jobs are going to dwindle back down. So land use, depending on their location, larger utility, uh, utility scale solar facilities can raise concerns about land de uh, degradation and habitat loss. So building those large solar farms, also you have to break down, possibly impact the earth, impact, clear a lot of the, the land around it in order to make room for these solar panels and solar farms. So. Some of the electrical equipment, some solar panels, and most batteries contaminate the environment by releasing chemicals that enter and stay in the food chain, and particularly batteries and inverters will need replacing. So a lot of the so as I mentioned earlier, the disposal of the chemicals from the solar panels directly impacts our environment and the foods that we eat as well. Another bad thing about the solar energy is that it only receives energy when the sun is on it. So when the weather becomes cloudy, the output of the panels uh, dramatically decrease. Areas of the United States, like the Southwest, have a definite advantage in solar pow uh, power over areas, over areas such as the Northeast and Northwest that must spend most of the year under rain and clouds, as mentioned by Chris Sherwood of Liststrong.com. So only certain areas would be beneficial to send up these solar farms in order to collect as much energy as needed. But the amount of energy that would be lost, most solar plants would have to be in the southwest where solar energy production is at its highest efficiency. Transportation of that solar energy is unrealistic since exporting solar energy through power lines from 500 to 2,000 miles contains power losses of 10 to 20% respectively, depending on the areas. And most commercial solar, most commercial solar panels only contain 15 to 20% efficiency and newly released Sun Power X21345, that's one of the solar panel models, operates a record breaking 21.5%. Record so compared to fossil fuels, you just do not generate as much electricity and energy from the solar panels as you do the fossil fuels. All right. Along with that is solar panels and their maintenance. So solar panels located in heavily polluted environments that haven't been cleaned in months or might see a total, efficient, might see a total efficiency drop of 35%. So just imagine a, a solar panel on your roof or even these solar farms that tend to be in desert and open areas, all the sand just blowing around, 
the, the salt from the ocean blowing onto the solar panels, if you don't keep them nice and clean, they don't operate as efficient as they could since the solar panel isn't completely clear of debris. So that comes along with the maintenance part. So unless you're willing to pay someone to come over to your house, clean up your solar panels every so often, about every month or so, you're going to have to do it yourself, which poses a lot of dangers. All right. All right. And some of those dangers, as OSHA mentions, workers in the solar energy industry are exposed to serious hazards such as, such as arc, excuse me, arc flashes, electric shock, falls, and thermal burns, causing injury and death. So with that being said, rebuilding our infrastructure in order to make room for a new way of creating energy, possible Im implementation, but full change overnight is impossible. Fossil fuels are the more convenient and best use of it in getting our energy and keeping our uh, economy growing.